So today we are pleased to welcome Michelle Ibbotson and Aaron Bowers, who are here to share with us their experiences of living with a brain injury. Michelle is going to begin the evening with her presentation. We'll take a quick break, and then Aaron's going to come and tell us his story. So I'm going to hand this over to um, Michelle, and we'll get started. Okay, good evening. First of all, thank you for coming tonight. And second of all, please be kind because I'm very nervous. <laughs> I'm willing to answer any questions you have. Uh, if you could just wait till the end, that would be great. I need to admit something to you all. A couple of months ago when I was approached about speaking tonight, I was feeling pretty cocky about life. I felt like I had kicked this concussion's butt and that my recovery was in the bag. I've been lucky with my head injury, Lucky because each part of my journey seemed to come so easily. I was flattered to be asked, and, and I couldn't wait to speak and share my story. I felt really successful. Then came a setback. <laughs> the dreaded word us concussion people all cringe when we hear, setback. And before I could say post-concussion syndrome, I was a bawling mess wondering what the heck happened. Suddenly, this talk didn't seem like such a great idea. I was full of anxiety and worry about how I could be positive and honest about my recovery when I felt like a big, huge failure. After many sleepless nights and worrisome thoughts, I made a decision. I would start with the basics and go from there. With some assistance from the Return to School group, I thought really, really hard about how to keep myself on track and how to keep my thoughts organized. I would have to kick it old school with a genuine throwback to my school presentation days. So, if you wouldn't mind helping me out, I would love for you to nod vigorously if it's uh, something you agree with or if what I'm saying sounds familiar to you. Also, maybe laugh if you feel like it. Tonight I'm going to cover three parts of my life. The first is all about me. I'm going to spend a few minutes bragging about myself. Specifically, I'll talk about old me, the version of me before my head injury. And while I am an only child, insert your cliche here, <laughs> I realized that this is something most of us don't do. Most adults don't speak kindly about themselves, and that's a shame. Next, I'll talk about my accident, or as I call it, the big bang boom that changed my life. I won't spend all night on this, but I feel it needs to be talked about. I'll touch on life in the first few weeks and months that followed. And for the last part, I'm going to talk about the tools in my recovery toolbox, the things I've learned that have helped me get to where I am. And trust me when I say I could talk all night about this because my toolbox is stuffed to the top. Okay, get comfortable because here we go. My name is Michelle and I'm 38 years old and I enjoy long walks on the beach and, no, just kidding. <laughs> I'm an only child and I was born and raised in St. Thomas. I have three kids, ages 16, 11, and eight. And they're all boys, and they're named are Ethan, Oliver, and Avery. There they are. I also have a cat named Sergeant Puppy Cat, and Sarge for short, and a puppy dog named Miles. I'm a university graduate from UWO with a BA in sociology and a minor in thanatology, which is the study of death and dying. Most people don't usually know. I was a single mom to my oldest son, Ethan, when I met my husband, Jared. He joined the military, and soon after Oliver was born, <laughs> we moved to the base in Petawawa. I had a job on the base as the volunteer coordinator, and just before Jared deployed to Afghanistan, I became pregnant with Avery. We call him our tour baby because Jared was home for his birth, but he had to return to Afghanistan for a few months after. We lived in Petawawa for seven years, and then we lived for a year in Quebec. After an amicable marital separation, I moved with the boys to Stratford. I decided on Stratford because of its proximity to my hometown and for its booming job market. Thank you, Google, for assisting with that. We moved to Stratford in June 2014, and I was employed within two weeks. I'd gone to an agency to get help with my job search, and I was hired by them to be an employment facilitator. I ran a group to help people with disabilities find employment, and I really loved it. Even though life had bumps, it always does, I realized I was blessed. I've learned a lot about myself since the accident, and one major thing I've learned is how easily life came to me. Whenever something needed to be done, I, I just did it. I would often joke that if 20 things needed to be done in a day, I would do 30. I was a doer, 
and I definitely didn't understand people who weren't like me. School came easily to me and I was able to bang out essays um, the night before they were due and get pretty good grades. I rarely bought textbooks and I relied on class participation to gain course credits. I would honestly say that I put more thought, effort, and preparation into this talk than I ever did on essays or projects in school. It was the same for me at work. I loved my job and I was able to think quickly on my feet while other coworkers needed a lot of time for prep. As my husband was in the military, he was gone a lot, sometimes months on end, and I was often alone with my three boys. I worked a stressful full-time job, volunteered on a local board of directors, had plenty of friends, socialized a lot, <laughs> and all while my kids played competitive sports and participated in other activities. Of course, I had support from family and friends, but I always felt like I could do anything I set my mind to. Now, I wonder who that person was, how she did it, and just talking about it, the fast-paced life, it tires me out. That old me was a go-getter. I wanted to continue to work in social services, and I wanted to eventually be an executive director, a leader. Just before my accident happened, I was tossing the idea of returning to school to get my master's. I also saw myself dipping my toe in the world of politics at some point. I had no idea that one big bang boom would change my path so drastically, but it did. On Friday, February 27, 2015, I was on my way home after work. As I attempted to turn left off of a busy street onto the street in my neighborhood, I was rear-ended by a large white work van. Big bang boom. My Montana grocery getter minivan was pushed about 40 feet out of the intersection and into a snowbank. The impact blew the sliding doors off the rails, smashed all the back windows, and broke my seat. I remember it all so clearly, almost like it's in slow motion, and I remember how loud it was. My van was a total write-off. At some point, I decided I need to get out of the van, but I couldn't figure out how. Looking back, this is one of the things I now know were part due to my concussion. The solution to getting out of the van was unlocking the door. At some point, the police and fire department arrived, and I'm not sure how. I refused an ambulance because I noticed my oldest son's best friend standing at the side of the road, and I knew that my kids knew. And I was right. They did. I was so focused on getting home to them, it was all I could think about. I did eventually go to the hospital later that night, and I was diagnosed with bruised ribs and whiplash, at that point, because I hadn't actually hit my head, concussion wasn't even something we considered. Over the next few weeks, things got particularly bad. As my accident was on a Friday, I only missed the Monday of work. I jumped right back into life, except I could barely function. It was all my effort to be able to go to work, and I spent a lot of evenings sleeping or in pain. My kids ate a lot of cereal and craft dinner dinners. A couple of weeks after the accident, I started physiotherapy, and the idea was that if I could fix my shoulder and neck and arm pain, I could fix the rest of me. I never had headaches like that before, ever. In fact, I secretly judged people with headaches. I wondered why they couldn't just suck it up. After my accident, I learned what a headache felt like, and it was like, unlike anything I'd ever felt before. I no longer question or judge people who suffer from headaches. After a few weeks of treatment, my amazing physiotherapist speculated that I might have a concussion. A teary-eyed trip to my family doctor confirmed the diagnosis and I started off to heal my head. My contract ran out at work and I decided I would take a couple weeks to recover and then I would find a new job. That was over two years ago. I did everything my doctor and physiotherapist suggested I do. I became the most compliant patient I could be. I went screen free, I started a version of pacing and planning, and I got on any and every possible waiting list for services, and I did all of my home exercises. I even started taking an antidepressant when my doctor suggested it, although I will admit I was a tad insulted that he didn't think I could handle this concussion without meds. Silly, silly me. It was summer of 2015 when things really fell apart. The symptoms weren't going away. In fact, they were getting worse. I knew things needed to change when a walk on the beach ended up in me vomiting and sleeping the rest of the day away. I also noticed small things that made me feel crazy. Things like making phone calls, paying bills, seemed so darn overwhelming. 
I started avoiding the outside world. I would make plans, but I would cancel them. I hated going to stores, but I tried to push through my feelings. I was also experiencing a major anxiety attack. I literally never felt that way before, and I didn't know what to do. I also felt dumber, not as smart as the old me. I've said this since day one, I just feel dumber. I always felt so confident in new situations, and I saw myself as a very social person with a witty personality, but after the accident, that part of me disappeared, and I was nervous all the time. I felt like everyone was looking at me, and they all knew that I was dumb. I no longer felt witty, and I also experienced major sensitivity to light and all the other concussion symptoms. Headaches were a new way of life for me, and I won't speak too much about the headaches because a simple Google search will explain them, and I'm sure a lot of you know what they are, but I still get them, and they still suck. I now take preventative medication to help relieve the pain, and I swear that staying hydrated helps immensely. I've been shown a cool trick that I want to share with you at the end of my talk, but because my memory is the worst, I need you to remind me. Don't let me forget. Which reminds me, memory. <laughs> I won't lie and say that my memory was perfect before the Big Bang Boom, but remembering things has been a huge issue for me since. There was that one time that I forgot Ethan at school, or the time I just couldn't remember where the coffee was located at the grocery store. That ended up with my neighbor finding me in tears and helping me buy the coffee. There was also the few times I just didn't pay bills. Not that I didn't want to pay bills, but that I just forgot. Those big memory issues make life very difficult, but there are also the smaller things like buying ingredients to make a meal, but forgetting half of them, or forgetting where I parked my van here at Parkwood. Show of hands if that's ever happened to you. <laughs> I even had a hard time with remembering to grab sunglasses. Old me never wore sunglasses, but with the light sensitivity, they were a must. I also wear prism glasses to help with the headaches and for reading. Alone, these memory issues don't seem like a big deal, but combined with all the other concussion symptoms, they made life of a single mom to three boys pretty difficult. Paperwork was something else that stressed me out. Again, I won't lie and say that I, old me had a deep down love for paperwork because I didn't, but I was pretty organized. I had to be. And if anyone knows anything about working in social services or for non-for-profit agencies, paperwork is a way of life. <laughs> After the accident, I was so overwhelmed with personal paperwork that my mind just shut down. I started ignoring it, and the more I ignored it, the more it piled up. And the more I ignored it, the more it piled up all over my house. Not the best option when dealing with insurance. That alone was stressful enough. Side note, shout out to my awesome lawyer for all the help with everything official. I was able to watch our bigger TV without too much issue, thank goodness but I avoided my laptop like the plague. I stopped reading for pleasure and I had to limit my time on my phone. For the first time in my life, my make a plan and do it just didn't work. I was lost and overwhelmed in a world of clutter and nothing seemed to work for me anymore. Let's see, so there were headaches, not feeling like myself, anxiety, avoidance behavior, shying away from family and friends, memory loss, and feeling like I was going crazy. And that's just the gist since the Big Bang Boom. All of that and raising three active boys. <laughs> One of my friends who had known me for a while before the accident told me that I was a hot mess. But after the accident, I was just a mess. And in those, those words rang really true in those first few months. And on bad days, they still do. A side note to the, all the bummer stuff about my symptoms. I want to share that I'm grateful beyond words that I've always had the support of my friends, family, and then ex-husband. Another positive is that we've made a decision to remain married and the boys and I are moving back to Petawawa this summer. Okay, so enough about me. <laughs> Let's talk about the things I've learned since the Big Bang Boom. I've been a very willing participant in every group, class, and activity that's been offered to me. I have a physiotherapist, an occupational therapist, a family GP, a psychologist, a kinesiologist, an optometrist, and two vision therapists. Say that three times fast. Essentially, I've turned this recovery into a full-time job, and I have amazing, smart people on my team. In the beginning, I participated in a group about anxiety, and I started to learn about mindfulness. 
just a little over a year after my accident, I started attending the Brain X90 group here at Parkwood. I credit that group and the amazing staff for helping me start a hands-on approach to getting better. I attended two sessions of Brain X90 and I still utilize the tips and techniques, techniques I learned there. Brain X90 was also the first time I was able to meet other people with concussions and I started to realize I wasn't alone in this. I continued with physio and I started seeing an occupational therapist from Parkwood named Anna. Anna has been a rock for me. It was very difficult for me to allow her into my crazy, unorganized, clutter-filled house, but she didn't judge me. Instead, she helped me figure out how to get through each day and better than the day before. I started pacing and planning each day and I restarted meal planning for my kids. Anna gave me strategies on how to shop, pay bills, and basically live life day to day. One of the biggest hurdles I've had um, since the accident is to figure out that I take on too much. I went so long without feeling good that when a good day eventually did happen, I wanted to go, go, go. Then for the next few days, I would feel terrible. Hands up if that rings true for you. This still happens to me way more than I'd like to admit, but some days I just want to forget about the concussion, but boy, oh boy, do I pay for it. Anna, Ollie, oh, that's the wrong one. Oh, well. Anna also encouraged me to use technology. You know the saying, there's an app for that? Well, there is. <laughs> it's true. Instead of taking cards for appointments, I started logging them into my Google Calendar. I started snapping pictures of things I wanted or needed to remember. I also use my phone for alarms. I have about three or four daily alarms set on my phone besides my wake-up alarms. And yes, I have an alarm set every day to remind myself to pick up Ethan, and I haven't forgotten him since. Some of the apps I found helpful um, are Calm, Headspace, Notes, and Sam. Sam is an app that allows you to track your anxiety. It's interesting to look back and see the patterns after the fact. I use the Notes app for writing reminders and I attach them to my calendar. This feature is great when I have questions I want to ask at certain appointments. I use Headspace for relaxing and I don't use that as often as I should. And I use Calm for sleep stories. Another segue? Okay. Sleep. <laughs> sleep has been a major issue for me. I never have problems falling asleep. My problem is staying asleep. Anna also encouraged me to use the Fitbit. It helped to show me that, yes, my sleep patterns were terrible. On most nights, I was awake more than I was asleep. This has gotten better overall, but recently with my setback, dum, 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 setback, those words, I fell into a really bad sleep habit. This concussion journey is not linear. It goes two steps forward and 15 steps and a fall on the ground back. So anytime I feel like going backwards, I go to my toolbox to see which tool will help. I'll be honest and tell you that there are times when I hate the toolbox. I despise the fact that I even have to use it. There are days when I want to throw a pity party and invite myself. On those days, I ignore the tools. Usually these bad moments don't last too long, but my recent setback was different. My setback came at a time when I felt like I should be wrapping up this chapter of my life. I was ready to write concussion on it as the title and move on. Again, silly me. I started vision therapy and I was learning that all this time when I said I felt dumber, I wasn't exaggerating. My test showed that my reading level was that of someone in grade 10. A few other cognitive tests came back much lower than my pre-accident normal and that combined with the business of life set me on a downward spiral. I had just completed a six week class about working out and getting fit when I received the test results. And looking back, I see that the change in my routine didn't help. I fell into a depression. I felt terrible every day. I stopped attending the gym on my own, started canceling plans. My anxiety went through the roof. My headaches were back and worse than ever. And everything just seemed blah. It was the first time on my recovery journey that I felt hopeless. I constantly questioned myself, what if I can't fully recover? And what if this is it for me? I couldn't even muster up any positivity. Each day was a drag. Again, my team of super smart people were awesome. My doctor increased my meds. Remember those meds that I didn't think I needed? <laughs> and my team stepped up to help me. Anna reassured me that she, and she helped me to see that I've been doing so well. I've almost mastered day-to-day -day life again, and I've been using the tools, and it shows. 
Now, as I continue to maintain my life, I can start working on my cognitive problems. I'm still in active treatment, and I'm about to complete the return to school program here at Parkwood. I highly recommend it. One of the best parts of the class was hearing about the very cool technology for people with concussions. There. I attend, or the next one, yeah. I attend vision therapy twice a week in Godrich with Dr. Nisbet and his amazing staff at Huron Optometry. While at vision therapy, I'm learning why I feel different since the accident and how I can retrain my brain to move forward. Currently, I'm unable to follow a ball called the Marsden ball by turning my head or just with my eyes because it makes me feel sick. But I can lay on the floor and do it. That's me laying on the floor. <laughs> That little bit of knowledge came in handy recently when I wanted to support my 11-year-old son Oliver and read a chapter book with him. Guess how I managed it? I laid down and I read it. Now the vision therapist people would tell you all the smarty pants reasons why laying down helped me, and all, but I can't. I don't know why, but all I can say is that it did help me. So I've placed that new tool in my toolbox, and although I want to keep working towards not having to be horizontal to read, in the meantime, I have a way to cope. That's all this journey is, finding new ways to cope. Take time for yourself. It's a necessity for concussion recovery. I've also realized that I need to grieve the loss of old me, and I need to learn what new me is capable of. It's so scary. Luckily, there are so many amazing people working in this field, helping people like me get better. I hope you can fill your toolbox with some of the things you've heard tonight, and thanks for listening to me. But before I forget, I'd like to teach you a really simple way to give yourself a minute or to help with some symptoms. A huge thank you to my vision therapist, Lori, for sharing this trick with me. So if you have glasses, you need to remove them. You rub your hands. I like to think about like good energy stuff when I'm doing it, but you don't have to. And then you literally just put the palm of your hands into your eyes. Don't press hard but make sure that there's no light showing. And that's it. I like to sit for as long as possible, but with three boys, that's sometimes very short. <laughs> and that's it. Thanks so much for listening. Thank you very much, Michelle Thanks. and Oliver. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Oliver. We're just going to take a quick break, everybody. Um, we'll come back in about five after seven. In high school, things just came easy to me. I would spend my nights at football or rugby practice, go home, and either play video games with my friends or something. The next day, study for five minutes beforehand, before the test in the next period. Um, yeah, it's just, 
it's a, it's a huge change coming from uh, being someone who academically successful just came easy to someone who has to work for what they have. Um, in high school, I was on the honor roll. I was uh, captain of the football team. I was such a high achiever, and that's where I set my goals, was to be that high achiever. And I had no other lower expectations of that. Um, I expected to graduate high school with flying colors and be able to go to any university I could possibly imagine. Ever since I could remember, I've always wanted to be a doctor. That was my goal, uh, to be a doctor. That's the only thing I had on my mind. Um, and then concussions came into play. <laughs> Uh, they can really change everything, as I'm sure all of you know. Um, the first concussion I had was in April 2010. Uh, I was playing rugby, and I was in the middle of a scrum and a tackle, and I took a knee to the head. And I remember just feeling super dizzy and uh, just completely out of it. And I had, had to ask to get off the field. Um, within an hour or two, I still wasn't feeling myself as, you know, you know what, I really have to go home. This was a morning practice, and I had to leave school. Um, I went to the doctor. Uh, he said, oh, it's just a concussion. Uh, just take a few days off. He'll be fine. Okay. I thought nothing of it. Um, continued playing rugby throughout the season and didn't really have any problems there. But uh, it's not always the first concussion that gets you. The second concussion was in uh, tw October of 2011. Uh, I was playing for my senior football team. This was my last year in high school, and I did not want to give up the opportunity to really show my colors as a team leader and an enforcer and being a role model for all my younger players underneath me. Um, I have pictures of that hit. Uh, so for those of you who don't know, uh, this is not what your head is supposed to look like once you get hit. Um, I remember completely uh, being knocked out for like a moment. I was, didn't know where I was, didn't know what it was, and I remember my teammates all surrounding me saying, like, are you okay? And me being the team leader that I wanted to be said yes and got straight back up. I continued playing the game and didn't think anything of it until I got home. I just comp I really didn't feel myself. I was stuttering and slurring and just was really irritable for no reason. Um, luckily, I had a family member who had gone through the same thing playing football and had concussions, and we suspected that this might be uh, the same thing. And so I went to the doctor, and he said again, same thing. If it's a concussion, just go 10 days, symptom-free, and then you can play again. Um, the unfortunate thing was the next week was my final game of my high school football career, and there was no way I was going to miss that. Uh, so I lied to myself and to my doctor and said, I don't have any symptoms for 10 days. And on the 10th day was my game. Uh, I played that game, and that was the third reported concussion. I played the game that I shouldn't have, and I got a second hit. Uh, it was last play of the game. I thought this, like, it was, it was going to be a fairy tale moment ending the game and with all my friends, but it wasn't. I got hit on the very last play, and I just was brought to my knees. I don't, I, c I couldn't get up, and I had to, like it was the last play. Bl whistle was blown, and my coach came over like Bowers, what, like get up, you got to get up. Like I, I don't feel well. I, I, I think I got hit again. Um, but again, that the huge, like, most of you must be asking, why did you play again? That was the silliest thing that you could have done. Uh, but that drive to play as a member of a team and to be an, like a, a role model and a team leader to be to appear tough is such a pressure that there's nothing in the world you could have said to me to convince me not to play that game. It was the last game I would have ever played with my teammates 
my best friend, and I just, there's no way you could have convinced me otherwise. Looking back at it now, this was what set me back so far. As I said before, I was a high academic achiever. Uh, everything came to me so easily, and I thought nothing of it, just was going to fly through school. But after that last hit is when it really hit me academically. I barely could read in, in the sense that what I read, I didn't remember. I had to reread and reread and reread, and it just wasn't sticking. And it was the most frustrating thing in the world because that wasn't who I was. That's not who I am. I'm the achiever. I'm, uh, I have such high goals. Like, what, what is going on? Uh, so I went back to the doctor, and yeah, yep, you got another concussion. Mm. <sighs> Sorry, it's just hard to go remembering it all. Uh, so yeah, I it was just I remember the feeling of just being so helpless and beside myself because I couldn't do it and there was no reason why. I couldn't perform school. I couldn't uh, academically uh, be successful. I was receiving my first bad grades that I had ever received in my academic career. I was used to getting high 90s and uh, high 80s and this I, I was failing. For the first time in my life I was actually failing. and. It was shocking. I, I, I didn't know how to take it. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's just really mind-altering getting a concussion, not just... Um, getting over it is not the only thing that's uh, hard. It's remembering it and remembering what you went through, which is why it's hard for me to uh, continually speak to you today. Um, so that semester after my third concussion, I continued my courses. However, I had to have accommodation. I had to have courses, uh, assignments that were removed from my grade. I had to have extreme accommodation in terms of writing exams with extra time and only then was I able to get somewhere near close to the marks that I had um, and all I was told was by the doctors was it, give it time it'll time is the only thing that you can do to uh, heal just relax and do nothing just let your brain rest well, there was no way I was going to rest with the goals that I had in mind. Um, again, you, that drive, you couldn't tell me no, no matter what. I had my mind set on something, and there was no way that I could not do, not do it. Um, yeah, so... But that semester just barely passed, um, and the next following semester, I, t you know what? It's been enough time. I can take on this uh, course of no problem. I can, I can do this. Um, little did I know that the only reason I did well in the class semester because my teachers were so nice to me and let me take off those poor marks on my grades to get me to pass. Um, this, the semester I was supposed to graduate. I could not get a passing grade. I had to drop out, much to my uh, demise, uh, and I had to put off graduating with my friends. I had to put off all of my plans and that that I've held for my whole life of graduating on time and posting through everything. And that change of perception for me just rocked my world. Uh, I'm lucky that I had such nice friends to help me through it all and were very understanding in high school. Because even then, the academic aspect wasn't the only thing that was shocking for me in high school. I was 
found I, I, I like to consider myself as someone who is very social and going out and seeing friends just didn't entertain me anymore. I, it wasn't something that I wanted to do. Um, being in social situations, I was not able to contribute to conversations. I could not pay attention to what people were saying to me. And then even then, uh, the times that I did want to participate, I, I, I had a stutter or a slur. And the continue, continually uh, stuttering and slurring and having trouble finding words led me to be reluctant in talking to my friends and uh, participating socially. So I found myself uh, reflecting on what I did not achieve, what I had planned on achieving, all alone. So in the summer of that year, uh, 2012, I was determined that I'm going to do this. I'm going to graduate high school and go, I continue on with my path. I'm going to, yeah, this concussion was a setback and it's drained me off my path of uh, success, but I'm just going to keep on going and get back on. And I didn't learn from myself again. I, can t I had to drop courses that I took because I wasn't uh, academically able to uh, participate. I went to the doctors again, just give it time, your brain will rest. I finally said, okay, you know what, I'm going to rest. So I rested and from the summer of 2012 until January 2013. In uh, January 2013, I, uh, I came back to school and I was able to finally complete uh, a reduced course load, however, my uh, high school degree. And I graduated with honors and it was the first time in a while where I had finally felt that I had gotten over this concussion. Um, socially, again, my friends all came to support me from high school. They came to my graduation even though they had already had theirs to cheer me on. So that, that feeling of having people support you who you know love you and are there for you is massive especially to not only celebrate when you're having a bad time but or a tough time, it's to celebrate the little wins like that. Um, unfortunately, I knew after graduating that I wasn't going to go to university right away. I still had a few courses where I needed to improve my marks in order to be considered for acceptance. Uh, so in the summer of 2013, I took an English course. in hopes of that being my last course to uh, get under my belt in order to apply for universities and finally get back on my path. Um, and I did. I did do it. I successfully completed my summer course in English and two weeks before uh, school, uh, university was supposed to start, I received an acceptance from Western into kinesiology. Um, just remembering that feeling it was awesome. Yeah, I, just uh, finally, uh, after so much failure and so much hardship, I was finally back on my path. I was finally getting back to who I was and everything I wanted to be. Um, I started school and it was going good. First couple of weeks, it was great. I was in courses, I was learning again, and it felt like everything was the same. I was in residence for first year, making friends, being social. But as time started to go on, the weeks followed through and more work started to get on, I realized that this isn't like high school. It's, it was a lot tougher. And being the high achiever that I was in high school, never learned the proper study, study strategies and uh, self-discipline it took to be a successful university student and so I struggled. I uh, saw again my marks start to drop but nothing, nothing terribly. I, was, I always was prepared to have my marks drop from high school. That's what everyone tells you. Your first year 
you're, you can expect like a 10 to 20% drop in your markets. It's completely normal. And so that's what I brushed it off as to be was, oh, it's completely normal. It's not my concussion. <laughs> but then uh, second year came around and I really started to struggle again. The courses were of completely new material that I didn't cover in high school. So any prior knowledge I had from then was completely useless to me. I was learning completely new topics and I wasn't able to just coast by on who I was before. I really struggled to pass courses and to keep on track and that sent me into a, 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 a deep depression again. I like what are you like what's happening to you're not the same person as who you used to be and finally struggling and seeing myself go through s such difficulty with academics it was hard for me to understand that this is who I was I it, it's I wouldn't be able to get back to who I was that's what I thought anyway um, on top of all that, the social aspect in university was completely different. The friends that I had made didn't know who I was before. They didn't understand that I was a high achiever and that I was uh, socially, uh, what, uh, the word, what's the word I'm looking for? Socially, um, socially there. I wasn't so, like, so, like, I wasn't myself. Um, and they didn't know that. They just thought this is who I was. They saw me as someone who was reserved, who was just did poorly at school and worked far too hard for such low grades. Um, and this really set me back as well, not having someone there who understood what a concussion actually does to people, what having family members or friends there who understand who I was, it was hard. Um, and so that struggle finally sent me to say, you know what, There's, it, it, it's not going to just take time. It's not just going to get better on its own. I got to do something about this because I'm not happy living like this. I have things I want to do and it's just not working out for me. So. In January of 2013, I was finally referred to uh, the Parkwood program. I was lucky enough to see Penny and the other participants of the return to school group. Uh, and the techniques and study strategies I learned from there have been invaluable to me. I finally felt comfortable taking on uh, courses and finally tackling my goals. I felt that I was capable in a time for so long where I felt incapable and again not like myself. Um, so that's where, that's where I set off with was with this new mindset of being successful again and continuing on, continuing on through university again. And so second semester starts and I take the re reduced course load and at the same time I start seeing uh, Elizabeth Skirthing, my uh, language, path uh, spe my speech pathologist and she really helped me with uh, continuing those strategies of reading and writing and sp speech which just seemed so easy to me beforehand that I never even considered that there could be so much that I could have done to help these uh, problems that I was having. Um, and so that's what, what I set, set off. I could complete a return to school with Penny and the rest of them and with Elizabeth's health, I felt comfortable going into uh, 
uh, school again. Um, unfortunately, uh, the world had other plans for me, and I had a fourth concussion. After so long of feeling incapable, I was finally feeling capable again, only to have it taken away. I was walking home from a night out with my friends, and on our way home, uh, we saw a group, two girls that were surrounded by a group of guys, and they called us over and said, "Excuse me, can can you like do you know these guys?" And so me and my friends go up and try and figure out what's happening. And before we could do anything to try and defuse the situation that we didn't even know was there, I was knocked unconscious by an unsuspecting uh, assault. Um, I was punched in my head. Uh, I landed on the curb. And th at least this is what I'm told. I have no recollection of what happened. I remember waking up the hospital, surrounded by my friends and family, confused as to what had just happened, and just everything flashed back before me was, oh my god, you're going through it again. Um, and that's really when another feeling of hopelessness and um, I felt like a lost cause. It's just that feeling just set in again. And all of my goals and stuff just seemed completely out of reach. Um, so after that, I was very, in a deep, like, very depressed and beside myself for the, the weeks following. But with luckily, with the help of my friends and the help of my family, they were able to put me in a good mindset again to go back to school and try and be successful with these tools and strategies that I had learned from Return to School and uh, Elizabeth. Um, so with a, uh, the same drive that I always had before, I continued on. I trucked away at going back to school. I just tried my best to get through it, but trying your best academically isn't just about doing your best academically. All aspects points of your life affect how you can perform. I was depressed, and not only because of the concussion, but because of I, I, I had a loss of identity. I didn't know who I was anymore. This ath student athlete was now some guy with a concussion trying to get through school. And what I always had to tr tell myself that I never knew was that you're not just some guy. You are who you tell yourself. You are what you put the work into to be. I trucked through school with a completely different mindset. I finally was taking the time I needed to be successful again. Instead of just trying to push and push and push through it, I finally was doing the right thing and making moves. Um, sorry. Uh, Again, after this fourth concussion, one of the things I found was very pre more prevalent than before was my speech. I found myself uh, stuttering and slurring and a lot more uh, prevalent than before word finding. Uh, and this led to me feeling even more socially inept and secluded as conversations and speaking just wasn't as fluid as it was t to me once before. Um, and so, again, the second semester after receiving my fourth concussion, I ended up withdrawing from my courses. Not due to the fact that I wasn't academically able, I just was not in the mindset to be successful. I was depressed. I was... Uh, 
completely enabled to do the simplest things like get out of bed in the morning or make yourself food. And that can really take a toll on you as a person while trying to go through school. And so for the better of myself, I decided that I'm going to take even longer to complete my degree and tack on just a few more years. Um, but in that time, I really had alone to myself the time needed to really reflect on who I was and who I wanted to be. Um, in the summer of 2016, I was able, was fortunate enough to go on to a, a Europe trip with my friends. Um, and this really made me see how fortunate I was. I had friends and family who were so supportive of me no matter what. No matter everything they saw me go through, they always told me, you can do it. You can pull through this. Um, and that t time was the first time that I had to myself and wasn't stressed about school. I wasn't worried about a course. I wasn't worried about the next assignment. I was finally just finding myself and who I really was because the stress and pressure of having concussions and symptoms really does put a toll on those around you. Yes, they're understanding, but it's not easy for them either, seeing someone they love and care about go through something so hard. So knowing that I wasn't going through this alone and realizing that for the first time in a while and truly understanding it is what brought back that feeling of being able to continue on. I got back from that trip to start my first semester again, a completely new man. I had a completely fresh mindset to be successful again. Um, but once removed from my friends back home and put back into university setting, the uh, thoughts of self-doubt and depression started to come up again. And again, in turn, started to affect my daily life and marks. And that's when I realized that this isn't a way to do it. You need to be in a good mindset to do this. So I took last semester off from school to work on myself, to uh, really find out what I can do and make a plan to be successful again. Because um, I was still having symptoms. No, like it, despite the, all the effort that I was putting into it, I still had symptoms. I could barely concentrate for more than 20 minutes at a time. I had to complete assignments at twice the length and exams at twice the length as it took other students. Um, and that again still brought down my mood. So I went to my family doctor um, after going to the doctors at Western and it was the first time that I acknowledged that I need help for my mood. I don't feel right and nothing else seems to be working. I need to talk to somebody. I need to I get this sorted. And so that's what I did. I went to the doctor and at Western and he said, we can help you up with somebody to talk to. And in the meantime, do you want uh, antidepressants? And I thought to myself, I'm depressed because of my concussion. So why not deal with like the chicken before the egg kind of thing? And so with suggestions from Elizabeth, uh, my language pathologist, um, I sought other drugs uh, that I had heard and done research about. Uh, I had read about a, Vivant, a, a pill called Vyvanse. It was normally used for ADHD, which is attention deficit disorder, a hyper dis deficit disorder. Anyway, it, you, it helps kids with those who have trouble uh, focusing and concentrating. And it, what it helped seemed to fit all of my symptoms that I was having. I couldn't focus in school. I couldn't focus on my daily life. And this fixed it. 
for the most part. Um, it was that step stool, step, uh, step stool that I needed to be able to grab the rope that I, in the pit that I was in because I felt so hopeless for so long looking up at what I wanted to be and just couldn't climb up. And this really helped me get to the point where I felt like I could climb. Um, that and together with the skills and strategies that I've learned from Becky, Bob, Elizabeth Penny, all those people from uh, the Parkwood program, it just completely set me on a new track that time I was off. So I came back to second semester this semester and employed everything that I had learned, everything that I had taken the time to do and learn and apply to myself academically and emotionally and it was the first time that I had gotten marks back that were who I was. I was finally getting A's in my classes. I was getting papers back. And I remember that get, getting that paper back and finally the, that first paper, paper I got back this semester and finally realizing that I, like, I'm back on track again. This is possible. This is something you can do. And there's no better feeling than realizing finally that a concussion isn't a life sentence. It's not something that defines you. And it's not something that changes who you are. Because as much as I told myself that I'll get back to myself, that was never something that I needed to do. I needed to get to my new self. And I know that I wouldn't be the man that I am today without that. And so I want to leave you with a quote from my favorite childhood character, Rafiki. Um, he says, oh yes, the past can hurt, but the way I see it, you can either run away from it or learn from it. And this concussion has taught me so much. I don't see it as a failure. I don't see my failures as failures. They're not, because they're not if you learn something from them. I learned who my real friends are. I learned that anything is possible, as much as it sounds cheesy, if you put your mind and effort into it. I learned that there are people out there who care for you and who are there to help you and that you don't have to go through this alone. And with that in mind, I'm hoping to be able to continue on being successful in university and move on to be a doctor in medical school. Um, I've got a long road ahead of me still, but uh, I finally feel like I can achieve it. And for everyone that was there for me, friends, family, all of the doctors and therapists, thank you. I really mean it. I would not be here today without you guys. Thank you very much, Aaron. Does anybody have any questions for Aaron before we let him go? <laughs> All right. Thank you very much, everybody. Um, that wraps up our education series for this year. Thank you so much for your interest and for attending. And we'll be back next year. Thanks, everyone.